Good afternoon folks uh, or good morning if you're on the other side of the water. Thanks for joining me this afternoon on uh, today's webinar or second in our series which is about improving efficiency in your workflow starting with import which we did uh, last week. Uh, today touching on some things with editing and in a couple of weeks time we are going to talk about um, exporting. For those of you on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, thanks for joining. Uh, if you want to ask a question or comment, you're more than welcome. Uh, just uh, pop your question or comments into the live chat on YouTube or the comments on Facebook and they will come straight through to me. If you are watching in our webinar room, uh, then you'll see a little Q&A tab to the right hand side. Just put your question in there. That separates it out from the main chat and is a little bit easier to follow or if you would prefer not to ask questions uh, and would like a bit more space, you can hide that section just with the down arrow there. So let us go ahead and find Capture One and talk about what we're gonna discuss uh, today in particular. So last week we spoke about importing, this week we're gonna speak about editing, not necessarily doing editing uh, by a, a large amount, but showing you a few ways to set yourself up for success so you can be faster at that task. So that's gonna include customization, it's gonna inc uh, include talking about shortcuts, uh, we're looking at styles for um, getting a base set of adjustments in, uh, we can talk about copy and apply, speed edit, and if there's time, we might sneak uh, style brushes in there as well. Um, now, this morning I thought I'd actually wrapped it up in shorter time. Uh, but my watch actually stopped, battery's dead. Um, so it was actually a bit longer than I considered this morning, but we'll try and keep it uh, briefer today, that's for sure. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna talk about really is about setting up the workspace uh, for success. So currently I am on the, <coughs> excuse me, default workspace, which looks like this. You might find when you first install Capture One, depending how new you are to Capture One, or if you're a long time user, that you would have gone through a brief onboarding process, which might have asked you some questions about putting the tools on the other side, putting the browser at the bottom, uh, and so on. Otherwise, your Capture One is gonna look like this. Now, we spend a lot of time thinking about the default workspace, what tools should be in what tool tabs, these guys over here. Uh, but to be honest, that's all largely irrelevant, and I'm probably getting shouted at by my colleagues if anyone's listening listening in because we want you to discover customization and make Capture One work for you and that could be doing a very few simple things which we'll look at in a second to a whole lot more extensive stuff uh, in terms of changing the appearance. Now I'm just going to touch on a few basic things and the reason for not going full hog into customization is because one we could spend an hour talking about it and two we are going to spend an hour talking about it on uh, the 23rd of June which you can see here so if you go to our learn.captureone.com page you can sign up for a full-on customizing webinar now there's a slight political reason for that as well because we're changing some things which is going to make this even better but that is not here yet so just to tease you with that um, one second, I think I just moved my window a bit, doesn't matter. Um, so to tease you with that, go ahead and sign up for that. But let's do a couple of basic things. Really, the, the principle that is good for all of you to try and do is to remove some of the things that you're never gonna use. I'll show you in a second. Bring to the surface or the forefront things that you use regularly and just rearrange it in a way that is at least more logical to you. So a couple of things I do first of all is um, over here, so our various different tool tabs which have different tool categories. Uh, I'm never gonna shoot tethered for the most part, or at least I do, but extremely rarely. So having a whole tool tab taking up space here doesn't make sense. So we can right click on it and just choose to remove uh, that capture tool tab. There we go, that's gone. So that saves me a bit of space. Now the current order is has some color tools, if I hover that, and some exposure tools. That personally doesn't make sense to me, so I tend to do exposure things before color things. So you'll see if I just hover over that tool tab, there's a little help bubble underneath that says command drag to reorder if you're on the Mac. If you're on a PC, 
it's going to be your alt key. So I would then prefer to pop that, this one here first. So that's a couple of basic things I do with tool tabs. Uh, the next thing, um, and something which I use quite a lot, which hopefully we get a brief chance to look at today, is style brushes. Now the style brush dialog or tool takes up quite a lot of space over here on the left hand side. So for me it makes sense to stick that in its own tool tab. So if I right click anywhere in this dead space, I can choose to add myself a custom tool tab. And this can be um, really anything. And you can have the same tools that are already shown in other tool tabs, but I'm gonna make one specifically for my style brushes. So I'm gonna call this style brushes. We can choose an icon. Let's go for something layery looking. And we're gonna say add tab. Now it starts off completely empty but you can right click again anywhere in this dead space and I'm going to add my style brushes and I'm going to add my um, layers tool, layers, layers, layers. And let's put the layers tool up top and I can open up this panel so I can pretty much see everything in one hit like so. Um, and as I tend to do that somewhere in the editing process, I'm going to stick it next to my exposure tool tab. And as I don't need style brushes in here anymore, I can click on the three dots and say, get rid of that tool. There we go. Uh, otherwise, I tend to use <clears throat> Capture One in a relatively default state. Uh, the reason for that generally is because if I created a completely wacky, totally different workspace, it would be very hard for you to follow if you're on the default. So I prevent myself from going too far, but that's already makes a lot more sense to me. And that's also to say in the exposure tool tab myself, I tend to use levels a lot more, so I would bring that further up. Uh, same for clarity, so there's less scrolling. Um, question from David says, how do you resize the tool panels? Uh, I have style brushes. Oh, that's an incredibly long comment. Let's see if we can make that a bit smaller. How do you resize the tool panel? So I've style brushes enabled, there's a lot of empty space below and I can't seem to make it smaller. <laughs> well, David, doesn't work that great, if I'm honest. So you can go here and say auto size, medium size. You might find that uh, there's other choices there. They can be a little bit illogical sometimes with the size they create, uh, but we are aware of that and we are looking to make that better. I just can't tell you when per se, but that's how you can change the size of the tools just here. Uh, if you edit the tool tabs on the Mac, does the version on the MacBook update too? Uh, same question we had this morning, which is interesting. So if you go to, I'm just gonna bring up our support page and you, and please don't forget that this support page exists. There's loads of, handy articles on here, uh, great writers who are updating this. So use the search term. So if I say copying workspace, let's try that. How do I move custom files and settings from one computer to another? Mark, that was your question. Uh, so if you have a look down here, there's gives you a location, which I will show you for the Mac, and it gives you a location for Windows. So on our Mac, Let's have a look at that first. If you go to the finder, go to the go menu, index finger, hold down the option button and you'll see the library folder pop up like so. Then we can go into that, except I let go of the option key. Good job, David. Go into the library folder, navigate to application support, capture one, and then workspaces, you'll find a few different plist files, which you can copy from space to space or computer to computer. So just have a look at that support article in a bit more detail. So that's this one here. How can I move custom files? And that goes for styles and, you know, all the other preset stuff, if you like, in Capture One. Um, okay, um, let's check over here. I think question-wise we're okay so far. Uh, so Mark, just, just do that and then that way you can sync across all your Macs or PCs. 
where was I? Uh, customization. Now, of course, if you have spent customize time customizing, save it uh, so you don't lose it. Or if you are using more than one computer or you change computers, you can then, of course, keep that consistency. So if you go under Window Workspace, you can save your workspace. So if I say save workspace and we call this David's workspace, workspace, my God, like so workspace, <laughs> save. Now we can always return to this. So if I just flick back to the default for a second, see my tool tabs change. If I go to uh, my David's workspace, here we go. Then it flicks back over to that. So always save your workspaces. Uh, when we update Capture One with dot releases um, or major releases, what you'll also find is back up from, see the last release, 15.2. So we do make an automatic backup, but it does make sense to save your workspaces as well. And you can also consider workspaces for different tasks. Okay, so more on customizing in the future because we can change color schemes of things. We can do a whole load of stuff for customization. So in depth for that at the end of June. So let's now talk about um, shortcut keys. And if you're not a fan of shortcut keys, uh, try to become one. It uh, doesn't mean you have to learn hundreds and hundreds and hundreds, but if you can keep you know, five in your head, that will be a little big benefit. Uh, the shortcut keys which you're probably going to want to navigate around with uh, mostly center around these cursor tools. So if you can remember a couple of those and a few other tricks that we can do, which we'll come to as well. Um, so talking about these cursor tools up the top here, if we hover over one of them, so crop, for example, then you'll see listed next to it is its shortcut key. So if I want to quickly get to my crop tool, don't waste time navigating up to uh, the crop tool. See on your keyboard, tap, and now we've got our cropping ready to go. Also with these cursor tools, always have a try by right or control clicking. So if I right click, then we also get access to uh, the sub menu, if you like, of these cursor tools. So I either have to click next to it to find the aspect ratios and a few other things, or I can simply right click and then I can change my various different aspect ratios like so, much faster than having to navigate back up to this space. So also exercise that. And if you wanna reset the crop quickly, you can do so here like so without having to change to a different tool tab, find your crop tool, reset the crop, go back to your editing tab, whatever you're doing, and then start cropping again. So also do that, that will save you a bunch of time. The other cursor tool which is helpful to move around with, and that would be H on your keyboard by default, we we'll talk about custom shortcuts in a minute, is the one which generally I keep um, as my default cursor tool, if that's a way to, to talk about it. So I'm generally switching between the hand tool uh, to zoom in and out with a double tap, in and out, uh, and the cursor tool to actually crop. Uh, little handy feature, if you're zoomed in to 100%, let's just hide the browser for a second, also a shortcut, Command B. If you're zoomed into 100%, right click, you actually get a little mini navigator. So you can whiz your way around the picture quite quickly, especially if you're working with high resolution files, rather than having to drag your way around the corners, a bit more laborious, right click, and I can quickly go to a different spot in no time. Uh, that was broken on the PC or it had weird behavior, I should say, but I'm pretty sure that's also fixed uh, for PC as well. Now this cursor tool, the probably the default, the select cursor tool, uh, has actually very limited use for me. You can also hold down space to get the pan cursor tool up temporarily, but I'm very rarely on this cursor tool because it has, if I'm honest, pretty limited use. Uh, you can use it to move guides around if you've added guides, guides to your shot. Uh, you can use it to tap on a photo to move it to a nominated selects folder or remove it, but that's about it. So generally, I'm hopping between this one and this one. 
as I mentioned, you can see the shortcut key for the particular cursor tool. Um, and I had a conversation, let's just get rid of these guides with a customer the other week who was a big fan of this cursor tool, Rotate Freehand, which allows you to just click drag on the picture and rotate. Uh, so he could quickly move through a bunch of different shots and quickly tweak uh, the rotation just by moving through and then dragging his cursor tool on the photos. But he said it's super annoying because when I tap R on my keyboard, it always takes me to the straighten tool. Uh, I never use the straighten tool. I'm always rotating freehand. Um, said fine, just disable these other shortcuts then. What you can do if they're all the same, you can shift cycle through them. Uh, so if I hold down my shift key and just tap on the R button, then you'll see if I just come out that dialog, sorry, shift R like so, then it cycles through those different cursor tools. Or if I did Shift H, then you see it's cycling through the different kind of pan cursor tools we have. But I agree that's uh, kind of um, a little bit slow if the only cursor tool you're gonna use is this one. So this brings us to Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, where, um, I'd already had it opened, where the search bar is your friend um, and also curiosity is your friend as well. We have lots of conversations externally with customers and internally. Oh, I wish there was a shortcut to do such and such in Capture One. High chance there probably is. Uh, at last count, uh, I think there was something like 500 different actions you could do with shortcut keys. So there is safe to say a lot of shortcuts that can be attached uh, to keyboards. Uh, so the best thing to do if you are looking for a shortcut is don't try and wade your way through the list and second guess where it could be. Just type it in the search bar. So this was freehand as we spoke. So if I start typing freehand, okay, great. It's in cursor tools rotation. So cursor tools, um, where are we? Rotation. So what I could do is just get rid of that one, that one, and that one or I can make different ones. And now whenever I tap R on my keyboard, I go straight to rotate freehand like so. So all of those can be changed if we look at, um, let's say the pan cursor tool, move overlay, move watermark, they're all H, but you could set up your own or shift cycle through them. You've got all the different color pickers here. There's a lot, which if you've got the memory for it, you could bind uh, to. Uh, various different keyboard shortcuts. But that element of curiosity is really important and to use uh, the search command. Or if you've tapped a key by accident and you thought, what the hell did I just do? You can change it to key and if I press R, it tells me, okay, it's doing rotate freehand, it's doing auto rotation, reset for command R, rotate right and so on. So use the search term, it makes using this much, much easier. Um, by default, you will be on the, no surprises, default keyboard shortcuts. If you try and edit something, let's like, whatever, exposure warning, as soon as I try and edit that, you'll be prompted to create your own keyboard shortcut list, which I have here, my default, and I don't change a lot, but there's a few things which make more sense to me, which is the whole point of customization. It's impossible to predict everybody's behavior. No two people are the same. So make uh, Capture One your own. <laughs> David's gonna catch me out here and say, is there a keyboard shortcut for copy layer? Let's try. There's lots for layers, but I don't think there's one for copy layer. If we type in layer, we've got add all these new things, which I'm gonna talk about in a minute. Layer opacity, select up and down, select the background, toggle the layer on and off, but sorry, David. You would pick the one which doesn't exist, um, copy layer, so no. But that again could be a nice one. Can you print out your shortcuts just flashed up? Yes, so if you say list shortcuts, it will open a um, web page, essentially, and then that will show you all your shortcuts which you can print and commit to memory if you wish. Okay, so what came up this morning on the, the first round um, oh, sorry, I just saw another question. Um, can you have shortcuts for auto adjustments like auto straighten? Yeah, I think it was on there actually. 
Uh, it comes under auto rotate, which is maybe not the best way to call it. Auto adjustments rotation. So option R. So if I hit um, option R on this shot, then it auto rotates like so. And that could also be on a batch. So again, have a look around in the search term. If you don't find it on first go, just try a different search term in case we've called it something else. And that was a very good um, example of that. Um, uh, sorry, I couldn't read your name. For Kelly, if you've added your keyboard shortcuts, is there a qu quick way to see all of yours? Yes, with that help list. Um, can you change the order instead of deleting a shortcut? Well, oh, in terms of these, do you mean? Uh, or in terms of the other shortcuts? Essentially, you always have to delete it or overwrite it. So for example, select primary or this one, invert selection. If I type something else, then it will just override it or hit the X to delete it. Sorry if I didn't understand uh, your question. <laughs> David, so sneaky. That was the reason for my question. It's at your band. Um, <laughs> all right, but if you've got any shortcuts that are missing, just make a support case and say, I'd love a shortcut for so-and-so. It's probably not super difficult to, to add some of them. So what I wanted to talk about was um, this one. So if I just search for layer, so this one, add new ad empty adjustment layer, add new field adjustment layer, or whatever. These are just an example I used earlier. So those of you who are addicted to buying gadgets might also find something interesting about these various different editing panels that have popped up. Uh, like monogram, console. I've got one over here which I will just show you briefly uh, which is I'll just pull out a few bits of it. Um, it helps if you can see it. So this kind of modular system which you can fit together as you see fit and then you've got the ability to play with adjustments with dials, buttons and so on. So this one is by Monogram. You also know products from Loop Deck. Um, but they're not for everybody. And we're gonna look at speed edit later, which is probably the most economical way to do something like this using the equipment uh, that you already own. So monogram here, uh, you've also got tangent element, which makes really nice high-end gear. And when I say high-end, I mean high quality, great construction, best integration with Capture One, but high-end also comes at a price. Uh, but there are a few options out there, but we will look at speed edit, which is probably going to be enough for a lot of you. If you're doing a lot of high volume editing and you have the desk space to accommodate it, that's my problem. You know, having something like this is often not always uh, perfect when I have, you know, another laptop sitting over here uh, and something else you're going to see in a minute. But if you fancy something a little bit more basic and a bit more simple, which will help you with keyboard shortcuts if you struggle to remember them, then you could look at something, I'm just gonna carefully pull it out because otherwise I'm gonna disconnect everything. This is called a, a Stream Deck, so Elgato Stream Deck. Uh, it's just really a USB device which has a bunch of buttons on it and each button has a small OLED display. I use it really for what we're doing now, which is scene switching. So just by hitting these different buttons, then we can mix in various different uh, views uh, and angles and so forth. So that's really its primary purpose. But just before starting, I set up these two buttons down here at the bottom. Uh, and what these can do is essentially bind to um, any keyboard shortcut, essentially. So if we look at uh, the control panel for it. So first of all, let's bring up this one, configure stream deck. So down here, I've just set up a little multi action button. So if I double click on that, which when I hit it, it tells uh, the system to open capture one in case it's not in focus. There's a tiny delay of hundred milliseconds. And then it says, do this hotkey shift command L, which adds a new layer. And if you want to, you can design a different fancy button for it and so on. So in theory, if I now hit that button like so, then I've made myself a new adjustment layer. If I tap 
this button, which was the other one, I've made myself a new field adjustment layer, as you can see. So if you struggle to remember your shortcut keys and you feel like binding some of those basic ones to something like the Stream Deck, then why not? That could be quite nice. You could add your cursor keys to that. You could add all your different color pickers to it. You could add things like adding layers to it, triggering an export, taking a photo if you shoot tethered, all those kinds of things. So really, um, it could be a bit of an expensive toy, but again, if you struggle to remember shortcut keys and you wanna move through Capture on a bit faster, that's also an option for you as well. Right, that's enough on spending uh, your money on gadgets. Uh, let me just check for questions. Is the Capture One, oh, that's a blast from the past. Uh, is the Capture One Logic Keyboard still available? Uh, no, it isn't actually. Um, if you're wondering, if we look in here, you can see there's something called Logic Keyboard. So there's a company called Logic Keyboards, funnily enough, that make keyboards for various different applications. I haven't heard much from them of late, to be honest. Uh, what they used to do was buy Apple USB keyboards and then reprint the keys for specific applications. Uh, when Mac started making the Magic Keyboards, it's one down there somewhere, but I can't see it. Uh, the Magic Keyboards, they struggled a little bit because the material that it was made of, they couldn't print onto it anymore. So it kind of died off with Capture One, but I don't know if they still make them. Um, I used to have one, but um, it got bent in a suitcase. Otherwise, I'd show it to you. Uh, but no, they're not available any longer, unfortunately. But what we did find was that everyone's shortcut list was quite personal. So unless you were willing to stick with the logic set, then of course it would have limited appeal as well. Okay, so let's move on to some actual editing because I know we haven't really done any editing, but we're gonna talk about um, making a base style and making sure you know how to apply that. So let's reset this shot. Now I've picked this one because generally what I do when I'm um, editing, uh, oh, there we go, Paul just says Logic still exists. They're still at NAB, but not with Magic Keyboards. Probably for the reasons that, that I state as well, so with their own keyboards. Um, but it was never super popular with Capture One, which potentially could have been our fault more than anything. Uh, but as I said, as long as you're willing to stick with that Logic Keyboard set, then it makes sense. But if you're not, which is what we found, then it doesn't make so much sense. But if you think it's interesting, lobby us, and then of course we can do so. Okay, uh, styles. So what I do when I start editing, I have the same kind of adjustments which I throw on every picture. Now it makes sense to have those as a style. Lots of people, um, or what we discovered, are not quite sure how to make that style and actually how to use it. Now, last week we applied a style on import, which is the best, most efficient way to do it. If you've forgotten to do that, or you don't quite know how to make the style, then it's dead simple. So let's take my example of the same adjustments that I throw on every picture. So let's put those on this image and actually do a couple of edits that we wanna make sure are not included onto the style. So first of all, we know this is a bit dark, so I'm gonna brighten it up. Uh, if I was editing this, I would also crop it as well. Don't forget, right click to access those options. Um, standard things I tend to input is, I like my shots a bit more contrasty, so I'm gonna add some points of contrast. I prefer to desaturate. Uh, I prefer muted colors, so I'm gonna pull that down a little bit as well. I also prefer a bit of clarity, so let's add 10 points of there. And generally for color toning, I prefer cooler shadows, warmer midtones, and highlights like so. So these adjustments, the color balance, the clarity, the exposure contrast, um, for this shot, I'd call it down a bit, um, is something that I would want to have on every shot. But of course, I don't want the exposure adjustment and the white balance either, because I'm gonna rely on my camera generally uh, to auto white balance, or I'm gonna set it manually in the camera. I don't want to override it with a style. 
So if we go to our styles and presets tool and we're going to say save custom style. And this dialogue is really important because now it's going to show me everything that is part of that style. And here I can make a choice um, about what I want to include in that style and what I want to take away. So I would not want exposure. I want contrast and saturation. I don't want the white balance. I want my color balance edits. Uh, I definitely don't want the crop and hopefully nothing else is ticked. Clarity, but all the metadata is off because I wouldn't want to override any metadata that I would have put in on my import process as we saw before. So now I need to hit save and we're going to call this my base adjustments and say save. So now let's just pick um, other pictures. Let's just go for these four. I'm going to reset them in case there's any adjustments. So we've got these four pictures under custom styles. I've now got make sure something's turned on, which we're going to come to turn on my base adjustments, which is going to throw those adjustments on all those pictures like so. Or you can use that if you remember in the import dialogue down here, custom styles, my base adjustments. So that means it's applied as you import, which is the most efficient uh, way to do it. So if you're not doing that, that's just a really good way to accelerate, you know, the first bit of those adjustments. Uh, okay. Oh, someone put a link for Logic Keyboards as well. Shows what I know, doesn't it? Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Torbox, that was another suggestion uh, from someone over in the webinar room here. That's just a little USB gadget which has dials and buttons and so on, which you can customize quite nice. Um, any chance to assign shortcuts to the MacBook Pro touch bar? You can customize the touch bar and I assume I don't have a touch bar anymore, so we can't try. Uh, and actually the new MacBook Pros don't even have touch bars, so maybe it's not going to come back. Um, but in theory, I think you can actually create your own custom touch bar and add shortcuts to that, but don't quote me on that. As I said, as I don't have a touch bar anymore, we can't have a look. Um, Alan says, why can some days I can zoom in and out with the trackpad and other time I need to hit the option key as well as the trackpad? I could only think, Alan, because it's not something, so if I use my trackpad, I can only think if maybe you're on different shortcut key, but it shouldn't can't replicate it. I can zoom with the pinch quite easily, but next time it say perhaps doesn't work, then um, just take a note of what cursor key is selected or something else. Or maybe it's something like one of the color pickers. I wouldn't know. Nope. So I can't replicate it, Alan, but if it happens again, make a note of the, the current environment uh, you're in as well. Okay, that's it for questions. So this leads us nicely when we're talking about styles is to the wonderful feature called um, speed edit. So are these the four pictures? No, I want these four pictures up for speed edit. So what is speed edit? So we spoke a little bit about uh, the different hardware devices like Tangent Element, Loop Deck, Torbox as one, uh, the Monogram console, which you might like to try with Capture One, but they're not for everybody and it's extra equipment that you need to fit onto your desk. Uh, but you already have uh, some equipment already on your desk, generally. You have a keyboard, you have a tablet potentially, or you might even have a mouse you have something. And by combining those two things together, we can give you that kind of analog import where you don't really, or not really, you don't have to navigate over to the tools to make adjustments. So if we look in edit keyboard shortcuts, uh, you'll see over here on the second uh, column, we've got speed edit keys, which essentially follow this row, QWER along the top, ASDF, uh, Z, uh, and then if we scroll down a bit, we've got numbers. Oh, here we go. One and two for Kelvin and Tint. And there's some non-assigned speed edit tools, if you wish. And how speed edit works is it's very quickly. 
uh, very simple. So let's say we wanted to edit the exposure of all these pictures because it also works on a batch. I would hold Q down on my keyboard. You'll see exposure pops up if I just move my cursor a bit up here. And then whether you're on a pen uh, or a mouse, click drag anywhere. And then you've just got a giant slider on the screen. So I'm just dragging left and right. And now my display is acting or the entire photo is just acting like a slider, if you like. If you're on a trackpad, you can't see my trackpad, but I can swipe up and down, two finger swipe, and that does the same thing. Or you can use your cursor keys if you want to jog it a little bit. So if I use my cursor keys, then you can see the values changing like so. Um, okay. So right now you can see speed edit. If we just hide the screen overhead camera momentarily, you'll see speed edit is working on all those four pictures. Great. So if we wanted to edit these shots, first of all, that's way too bright. So I'm gonna pull the exposure down. If I hold W, I get contrast up like so. Uh, so I can add a bit more contrast. Let's uh, pull down those highlights slightly. I would like to make my shadows and blacks, which is under F a bit darker, so I'm going to pull those down and so on. Now one of these pictures is not like the other in terms of its color toning, white balance or whatever. It's uh, a little bit skewed. So as a series of pictures, they don't match too nicely. So what if I just wanted to tweak the white balance of one picture? Well, right now, whatever I do is going to perform or is going to have an effect on all of those pictures. So as we saw, doing speed edit, it's working on all four pictures at the same time. But there's a really handy toggle up here called edit all selected variants. And that essentially means edit everything that I can see on my screen, or just the primary variant if we want to use capture one jargon. And the primary variant is this guy, the one with the thicker white border. So when you have a selection active, so we've got four pictures selected, if I just use my cursor keys, I can decide which one is the primary. So primary variant. So in Capture One language, these are four selected variants. This one is the primary variant. So when we have edit all selected variants on, when I'm using something like speed edit, then it affects all the photos. Same goes if I wanna rotate right or left, export the pictures, uh, delete them, those kind of actions, add a color tag or a star rating. So if I press five now or zero, the, the star rating is you know, the same for all of them and so forth. Like if I press plus, I uh, can't remember what my color tag, oh, here we go, my color tag keys, seven, eight, and nine. So if I change the color tag to red, then it affects all of them, which might not be especially desirable. So by turning this off, we're now only going to affect the primary, which is currently this guy with the thick white border. So if we want to tweak this Kelvin so it's a better match, then now it's only affecting this photo so I can dial it in better so it matches those other four shots. Once I'm then now happy to go back and you know play with them as a collective, we can turn that back on. Now if it's cumbersome going up to this menu, we can right click and say customize toolbar and drag it as a toggle. So edit all selected off, speed edit only works on this picture, edit all selected on, speed edit works on everything. And notice when you're using speed edit, when I'm dragging the slider, so you see that guy on the top left has a different value. So we've got point, um, 0.004 here. So it's additive, to the current value. So what I'm saying is if I drag to the right, they don't all end up at one stop or one and a half. We're adding on or taking away that exposure value based on their original value. So it's accumulative. Uh, okay, um, little speed edit tip. Let's just go to one picture. You can work in full screen quite nicely because you don't need to see the tools. So if you want to quickly edit a picture, you can rack your way through the different speed edit amounts. Oh, sorry, speed edit functionality. And then it's a nice way of editing. 
because you're not distracted by the tools and you can actually work really, really quickly. I could use my cursor keys to go to the next image and so on. So if you want to edit singularly like that or work in a batch, then speed edit works quite nicely. And it's F to go full screen and escape to come out. But speed edit, you know, we've seen it. It's been around for a couple of years now uh, and we'd love for more people to use it because it's such a nice way to interact with uh, Capture One. You might say, well, why don't you use it, David? Well, I do, but it's not the easiest thing to show you in a webinar because you can't see what the heck's going on. And for teaching purposes, you really need to see which slider is, is being used. So with speed edit on full screen, if you don't catch that I've just tweaked you know, the, the levels like so, then it's difficult uh, to follow. But otherwise, it's a really great feature which you guys should be using whenever it makes sense. Okay, um, mm, 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 how do you switch from QWERTY AZDF US speed edits to a French keyboard? So you can customize them, great question, in exactly the same way. So for you on your keyboard, I can't remember where the A is, but if we wanted to change the Q to the A, then we would just cancel it and then make that A. And you'll actually get a warning saying, okay, A is already in use, you're gonna reassign it. So if I hit enter, then you see A disappears from here and now it's up here. So you can just customize it in exactly uh, the same way and it will be part of your uh, keyboard shortcut set as well. So if you do have a foreign language keyboard, not foreign language, uh, non-US language keyboard, then customize away. Uh, let's see, um, check in. How do you switch from, oh, that was Robert's question. Uh, Sebastian, can you wireless tether Nikon Z cameras yet? No, currently the only wireless uh, compatibility is with Canon. Uh, but we are working on other manufacturers as well, but as delightfully, every manufacturer likes to do things slightly differently. It's not a, a fix all once we've done Canon, it doesn't mean automatically that all the other manufacturers are the same, but we we get there. And it's also a little bit hardware dependent which cameras make the most sense to be wireless, so they're reliable and not, you know, also incredibly slow. But something like the Z9 has decent hardware, so it should be possible in the future. Um, I was looking at my watch, which has stopped, so it's not 25 past, so it's quarter past. Uh, something which I'm also surprised that doesn't get so much use. And let's go back to this one, is style brushes. So we touched on it, first of all, when I was customizing, and it's something which, su such a fast, nice way to, to edit. Uh, we've always had layers in Capture One since version six, I think. Um, there's would have been nothing to stop you doing what I'm going to do now in version six, seven, eight, nine, but the steps to do so would be much longer. So this shot here, we did a super fast edit, generally looks okay. The only thing I would say is that the sun's probably behind. His face is a bit too dark for my liking. So if we wanted to brighten that up, forgetting we had style brushes, we would have to make a new layer. We would have to apply an adjustment. I would have to brush that adjustment in. I would have to set up my brush settings to make sense for that and so on. So there would be quite a few steps. But if I just want to brighten his face, I can go to my style brushes. I can find the Brighten style brush. Go on to uh, my photo. I wanna make the brush a bit bigger. First shortcut that we're gonna learn here. Control option, hold those two down, drag left and right and then the brush gets bigger and smaller. Um, on the PC, it is Control alt I think. Uh, if you, again, if you have a look on the support site, those shortcuts um, are listed. So this is a really fast way to change the size of your brush. Sorry, you can't see my pen. All I'm doing is dragging left and right. So holding these two down, drag left, drag right, we can change the size of the brush. So right away, I can get my brush pretty much like the size of his face, and then just do a few brush strokes like so. Turn off the mask. Capture One's automatically made me a new layer already with the name of the style brush. 
and then I can just go ahead and brighten up his face, maybe a bit of the wetsuit as well, so we can see into there, and job done. Now if I've gone too much, if I was a bit overly keen, let's say, I can drive the opacity back down to zero, or 100 is full adjustment, so I'll go back here. And if I need to erase a bit, I can just tap E on my keyboard, and then just come a little bit away here. So style brushes, super awesome, so speedy. So if I zoom in a little bit, uh, I could also take out some redness, so let's grab red skin reduction, uh, make my brush a bit smaller with that shortcut again, and then let's just take out some of the redness in the middle, a little bit on the forehead, like so. And what that's doing is setting up the color editor for me, um, setting up the brush to be correct um, with the right flow and opacity and so forth and then easily done. I could do actually a bit more brightening here just in his eyes so I'll make my brush nice and small and just open up the exposure across in his eyes like so. So if we turn that layer off you can see before and after. Now all of that totally agree with you as perfectly possible in Capture One 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 20, 21, 22, but the speed of getting to that point is infinitely faster with a style brush. Now there's a whole bunch that you can choose from, but like styles, you can make your own style brush as well. So if you set up a layer with the kind of adjustments you want and the kind of brush settings that you want in terms of size, hardness, flow, and so on, then you can save your own style brush. But to be honest, you've got tons of choice here. You can generally find a style brush that does the job. The missing one really is add clarity. Um, but it's, again, as I said, very easy to set up your own style brush. Uh, questions? Mr. Eric Nieder, when will Loot Deck's panels be fully supported on Windows? Uh, well, the way Loot Deck, I think, supports it better on the Mac is to use Apple Script uh, to, to bind that functionality better. As there is no equivalent to that on Windows, it's pretty difficult for them to support it fully. So um, it's not, there isn't really anything more Loot Deck can do. Uh, if you want full compatibility, then your best bet is Tangent because there is specific coding in Capture One that interfaces directly with Tangent. Um, but there's not much you can do about Loop Deck. I would say just pop in a feature request to us if that's something you feel is of a benefit. And going back to David's question, uh, where can we send suggestions? Just to the support site as I mentioned earlier. So make a support case under a feature request and then everything gets logged. Uh, Dick says, don't forget the style brush shortcut where you move up and down and it changes the softness. Yeah, so uh, if I just go back to this brush, so command option gives us the size. If I go up and down, you can see the hardness change like so. And before someone says it's really silly, um, that the cursor is moving, that's just a whack on thing. If I do it on my keyboard, you can see that it's static like so and left and right. So it's just a whack on driver annoyance uh, that it, it moves. So it's probably something that we can fix, but that's why you see the brush actually moving when I do it. But it doesn't bother me because we're not actually moving the brush that far uh, to see it change. Uh, you can also do shift, is it shift control option? Shift option command. There is another keyboard shortcut which allows you to change flow as well. And I can't remember what it is currently. <laughs> um, I thought it was those three. Oh, there we go, yeah. So if I do shift control option, spider hands, so these three, uh, then I can change opacity and flow like so. Uh, on the PC, what you need to do is the same shortcuts as you did before and then right click. But it's identical to Photoshop. So if you're a Photoshop user, then uh, it should be pretty familiar to you. All right, um, I think that was pretty much uh, almost the end except for one thing which I just wanted to point out, which also gets missed a lot. 
Let's just bring up these four for the sake of it. Um, if you want to copy and apply a single adjustment, there is a much faster way to do that than going through the copy and apply tools up in the loft end, uh, up in the top right hand corner. So let's say I'm cropping this photo like so, and I want them to be all the same aspect ratio and size and so on. And I want to copy this crop from here to the others. Easiest way to do that is if we go to the crop tool or any tool, this works not only for crop exposure, contrast, color balance, you name it. There's a little up down arrow here, which is a copy and apply for this particular tool. So if I tap this once and then say apply, you'll see it copy across to all those pictures. And then I could rearrange these crops if I wanted to. To make that even faster, let's just change the crop again. If I hold my shift key down and click on this button, then it instantly applies like so. So once again, let's make this crop bigger, shift click on here, and it sends that across. Same goes for, let's say, let's just mess up the exposure on this one. Shift click, sends that across to all the other shots. Otherwise, what you'll find you're doing is you have to press copy and apply, go to the adjustments clipboard, select none of them, tick on the one that you wanna have, and then say apply. That's just uh, super slow. Um, so using the single tool, copy and apply, is a really handy tip, not just for crops, for any adjustment. Uh, Simon says, does nobody love me? Am I blocked? <laughs> You're definitely not blocked, Simon. Did I miss a question? Uh, I'm trying to save a style that has multi-layers, including color balance and color edit. The layers show checked on the clipboard, but they're not saved in the style. Currently, you can't save layers in a style, I'm afraid, as Paul has answered, like so. Uh, so that might be causing the issue, which is true. But we know it's uh, a good uh, suggestion. Uh, it's not as easy to implement as it sounds, uh, but you're not the first person to mention it, that's for sure. Andrea says, oh, very kind of you, Andrea, partly inspired by, by you as well, if I'm honest, uh, due to a conversation I had with Andrea recently about time-saving stuff. So you can also thank Andrea for some of the tips in here as well. Okay, I think that is pretty much takes us to uh, the end of our webinar. I was just checking the questions. Jay says, can I use wireless tethering with Canon R? Yes, you can. Um, I want to have the same shortcuts in two different PCs. Do I just need to copy the corresponding XML and XSL files? Yes, you might have missed that was a question at the start. So if you rewind this shortly, uh, you can see how to do that. But yeah, basically um, in the support article, which I shared, which was this one, how can I move custom files and settings from one computer to another? So just go to support.capture1.com and search for that or just search for, I think I did uh, moving workspace or copying workspace, then you'll get the instructions for Windows and Mac as well. So have a look at that. All right, one thing I want to tell you. So next week, um, it was going to be the third and final part of this series, uh, but uh, we threw a spanner in the works and decided to go, um, or not next week, the week after next, it was gonna be uh, the third and final one in the series, which was exporting. So that's uh, this guy here. I need to change the date, I've just remembered. It's not on June the 9th. Uh, it's actually on June the 16th, because on June the 9th, I'm going to be in Iceland with this uh, character who also happens to be online. So for that week, I'm going to Iceland with Paul for a few reasons, uh, to gather raw files for you guys, to make some content for Capture One HQ, uh, to fulfill a special request for our CEO, Raphael, hopefully. Uh, so what we're going to do next Wednesday, uh, which we haven't planned what we're gonna really do yet, is to talk about the planning side of the expedition. So what does it take to plan a last minute trip, which it was pretty much last minute, that's my fault, 
uh, to another country to take in as many locations as possible, to shoot as much as possible, and to sleep, and to feed ourselves, and also to catch uh, the correct time of day as well. Uh, as Paul will tell you next week, you know, we're coming into the season in Iceland where we have some midnight sun, some really cool stuff going in that respect. So we want to shoot at stupid times of day when really we should be in bed. So there's a whole lot of planning to do and driving and logistics. And so we're going to talk about that and discuss a little bit about uh, what we're going to be doing in that week that we are in Iceland. And when we're in Iceland, internet forgiving. We hope to do a little bit of live broadcasting as well. Put the iPad through its paces so we can actually have some good uh, footage of using the I iPad on the road and editing back at base and all that fun stuff. So uh, join us next Wednesday, um, 6.30 p.m. Central European time. Um, obviously sometime in the morning for you guys in the US, but come along and uh, learn some stuff. Uh, as I say, Paul's done most of this in terms of the planning. I've just gone along for the ride, but it's, it's definitely a big logistical feat. And uh, yeah, glad that Paul made that. I'm just gonna copy the YouTube link in the comments there, and I will also find it uh, for you guys as well in the webinar room. But if you go to our our YouTube page. Hey look, I'll put my little subscribe button up. If you make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Capture One Pro on YouTube, then you'll get a notification when we go live, which will be super important, especially if you want to catch us falling over in Iceland. Great, thanks everybody. I uh, hope to see you next week for that and also the week next after that when we finish off this series with exporting where we're going to talk about uh, export recipes tokens and really the best way to make that all super efficient and get the best quality out of it as well so hopefully see you then enjoy your weekend when it arrives and we'll talk soon take care bye now